Hey YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades. So we got the frame back from the powder coater and I'm about to show you, or from the sandblaster. Actually it was a powder coater and they also do sandblasting services. So, But I'm about to show you why I had this frame sandblasted. So let's turn the camera around and let me show you why, why I had this frame sandblasted. All right, so I've got the frame here and all the paint's been sandblasted off of it. That's one of the welds on the front of the frame. Uh, you can see that weld, there's no penetration. The weld is basically laying on top of the steel. There was no heat applied to it. And yeah, that just, it needs to be ground out and redone. And there's welds like that all over this frame. There's just, there's nothing good about pretty much any weld on here. There's a couple here and there. Uh, at least here they made some kind of a half valid attempt to fill it up, but you can see that's just all boogered in there. There's no penetration, there's no heat provided. It's just it's just not good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna get this frame into the other shop where I can break out the grinder and we can we can really grind get grinding after this thing and remove some of these quite frankly, garbage welds. Cause this thing's not structural. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust this to drive, let my kids drive around on this thing. Just wanted to, just wanted to show you why I had this frame sandblasted. And I could see it even with all the paint. You know, that, that, that weld right there, see, I'll back off. That weld right there. That's a main structural weld on this frame, holding the back and the front together. That's no good. This weld right here, that was that was the plate that was holding the axle on. I mean, you can, look at that, you can actually see right through the weld. So that's all gotta be cleaned up, it's all gotta be fixed. Anyway, there we go. So like I said, we're gonna, we're gonna get this frame, we're gonna get it pushed over into the other shop, and we are going to make a run to Harbor Freight. I'm gonna buy a bunch of flapper wheels and a few grinding discs for the four inch, and we're gonna to get to grinding some of these welds off and then re-welding them. two kinds of people in this world. Those who know how to weld and those that wish they knew how to weld. The person that welded this is of the latter. Alright, so we've got the frame, all the crappy welds are re-welded, and we've got the frame pretty much ready to go now. The next step we got to do is we got to rebuild that front end. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to get ready to mount the rack and pinion unit for the, uh, for the steering. So let's go ahead and let's get that done. Alright, so here we've got the front of the frame. and. This is the rack and pinion unit, so we're going to basically mount it right in here. So we have plenty of room to clear the clear the tie rods, plenty of room to clear the, the pinion rack and pinion box, 
and then the the spindles will stick out here the spindles will stick out to the side out here uh, on the ends of the axle so I have to put in two uprights right here and right here to hold the rack and pinion box into place so I'm gonna go and we're gonna make we're gonna construct these these two uprights to put in here All right, so we got the rack and pinion roughly mounted. I've tacked in the uprights and I've temporarily mounted it just to make sure everything fits. Now what we have to do is we have to mock up uh, what's gonna be the front axle. So I've already taken some measurements. What I had to do is I had to take the, the tie rods and the rack and pinion, I had to put everything together and come up with a measurement. And the measurement I need is 31 inches for, my, for the width of my front axle. So I've got a piece or got a couple of sticks of one inch 11 gauge square tubing down there. That's what we're gonna use for the front axle. So then I'm gonna cut, let's go cut a 31 inch chunk for the, for the front axle setup and let's get that mocked up. Okay, so what, I'm, what I've gotta do is I've gotta have this front axle roughly four inches forward of the, the end of the rack and pinion. I've also very, very quickly realized that this frame is not perfectly square, not by any stretch of the means. So not only do I have to have it about four inches in front of the rack, I've also got to have it square with what's going to eventually be the back wheels. So the first thing I have to do is figure out approximately where four inches is, which is right there. And right there. Four inches. Now what I need to do is I need to reference a singular point where I can reference the front axle and the back axle, back axle to make sure that they're square with each other. Luckily I've got a cross member right here which, which is not going to move, it's going to be fixed. So I'm going to find the middle of this cross member. It's 16 and a half inches long. So that means eight and a quarter inches should be the center. And it is. So I am going to reference this mark
right there for both my front and my rear axles to square them up. So the other thing I need to have is I need to have approximately the same amount of stick out on both sides of the axle. dead on. That's exactly where that axle needs to sit to be square with that point. So now when I do the rear axle, I just have to square off that point again and all the wheels should line up. That went pretty good. We've got, the, we've got the front axle tacked into place. Now let's go ahead and let's get the spindle hardware. Let's tack the spindle hardware in place. All we're doing right now is tacking. I'm not doing any permanent welding. And let's get the spindle hardware in place. Let's see how the steering system reacts with all the tie rods and everything hooked into it. So there's our first issue. When you buy parts from different vendors, they don't always match up. So as you can see here, the hole for the spindles does not match the diameter for the bolt for the tie rod end. So I'm gonna have to drill those out. exceedingly well so we've got the 
spindles and basically the steering system kind of mocked up. It's not, nothing's welded into place permanent. Uh, the last thing we're gonna do today and then that's gonna be the wrap up of this video is we're gonna start working on the steering rod itself. Uh, when I bought this steering system, it came as a kit. I got the rack and pinion, I got the tie rods, I got the steering wheel and I got the steering rod. I know already that my steering rod is too short, but I can at least start to get it semi close to mocked up and correct. So let's start working on that. Not to mention the fact I'm almost out of gas. So we're gonna have to call her a wrap here until I get some more of that, but that'll be long enough for this video. So let's go get the rest of the steering parts and let's, let's see if we can, what else we can get mocked up tonight. All right, now like I said, this kit came, the steering kit came kind of all inclusive. I got a steering wheel here, which comes with the kit, the steering rod, and as I told you before, I can already see that it's way too short, so I'm gonna have to do an extension, which is not difficult. We'll do that later. It comes with the steering wheel shaft and post and adapter for mounting the steering wheel. And it also comes with the steering collar, which will get mounted up here to hold the steering wheel, along with both the bearings and the C-clips needed to keep everything captive. So, that being said, our next step is to kind of roughly guesstimate where we need to put this steering collar so to allow for fairly straight access or reasonably straight access to the rack and pinion. Now, the nice thing is, is this steering shaft has got U-joints on both ends. So we don't have to be critically online, we just have to be mostly online. What I'm more concerned about right now is getting a relatively good fit on this collar so the welds aren't filling gaps and this thing fills in really nicely. So I can see already, uh, it doesn't quite fit perfectly. I'm gonna have to get a grinder and I'm gonna have to grind some of that out and make this more of a, a true custom fit to fit the steering collar. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do tonight is I made a couple of these braces, which I'm gonna put one on each side right here. That's gonna provide a little extra lateral stability for the axle, and it's also gonna give a little extra uh, vertical stability to the axle, just to give this thing a little more, a little more rigidity. So let's get these tacked in, and let's continue on. All right, so the go-kart car project has come along nicely. Uh, we've got basically everything in the front end tacked up and I really can't do anything more until I get the rest of the, my parts to mock up the rear axle to make sure everything is straight with each other. So until then, I'm not gonna finish weld anything. I'm just gonna leave everything tacked and sitting as it is. And once I get the, uh, the remainder of the parts, I'm basically waiting for the rear axle shaft. So once I get those, then we can continue on. But some of you might be asking yourselves right now, why am I using square tube 
when the rest of the frame is all round tube? Uh, that's actually a very simple question. I can't find any round tube anywhere, not in the size and thickness sand that I need. So I was able to find some square tubing. Uh, this was the last two sticks actually that I was able to get my hands on. All the rest of it was either gone or spoken for. Uh, right now steel is very, very hard to come by and it's also very, very expensive. It's more than doubled in price uh, since last year. So right now steel is very, very hard to come by. I wanted to get the project done and I wanted to get it going. And I figured, you know what, it wouldn't hurt anything to use some, use some square tubing. It's not going to make that much difference in the end. Especially when you get a coat of paint on it, it'll almost be unnoticeable. So, until next time, until the next video, uh, this is Ed with Jack of All Trades. If you like what you're seeing here, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit that notification bell. That way you get notified every time I come up with a new video. And you're sure not to miss anything. So, thanks for coming along for the ride.